Number 10. Carnage In the Ultimate Universe, there have been a few different versions of Gwen Stacy. My favorite of the two is her clone version, who ends up becoming Carnage. In the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610, Carnage is also the monster responsible for Gwen's death, which makes her becoming Carnage even more dark and twisted. She ends up being cloned and bonded to the symbiote, regaining all the memories she had up until and including her death. This version of Gwen is later stated to be an exact replica by Tony Stark. Here Gwen's personality was different from from her 616 counterpart, while she was quite intelligent still, she also enjoyed causing some trouble and was more of a rebel. Before her death, Gwen had stated she wasn't romantically interested in Peter, easing the jealous mind of Mary Jane. In the Ultimate Universe, similar to the 616 reality, MJ, Peter, and Gwen are all close friends. Or they were until she died. Actually, I think they become close friends again, even after, so it all works out. Number 9. Gwen Gray We haven't seen this version of Gwen yet, but it is one of the ones we should be seeing in her new limited series Spider Gwen Gwenverse. This series is slated to come out in February, so we haven't seen any of these Gwen alternates in action just yet. However, we have seen some pretty spiffy character designs featuring some of these alts. Jean Grey alt Gwen J included amongst them. It's also not clear if all of the alternate Gwens will be making an appearance in the series or just on alternate covers for certain comics. Gwen Grey we can assume will be a powerful telekinetic and telepathic mutant who will at least appear once on the alternate cover for Amazing Spider-Man issue 88 with art by Francesco Mena. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Spider Gwens, one, you should go pick up this Gwenverse comic when it comes out in February, and two, you should let us know that you like it by clicking that like, then we'll do some more Gwen lists for you. Yay! Number 8. Joyce Delaney There have been many Gwen clones throughout comic book history ever since her fateful and tragic death. However, none of them have probably been as long lasting as Joyce Delaney. Joyce was the first, the first clone of Gwen made by the Jackal, simply to punish Peter Parker. Jackal, in case you didn't know, is Miles Warren, former professor of Gwen's, who was in love with her. He blamed Peter for Gwen's death. In truth, Joyce, it turned out, wasn't a real clone, but simply a student of Miles's who was genetically altered to become identical in appearance to Gwen. She would for a time settle down and marry a Miles Warren clone, who took the name Warren Miles, I kid you not. However, eventually Joyce, like so many other Gwens before her, would die at the hands of another Gwen Stacy clone, clones on clones on clones. Not to say that many Gwen Stacy clones have died at the hands of a Gwen clone, but just many of them have died. Yes. Number 7. Spider Gwen? No, not that. Spider Gwen from Earth 65, who is like the main point of this list. I'm talking about Spider Man Spider Gwen. Spider Girl? Spider Gwen? There was already a name Spider Gwen of Earth 65 had, wasn't it? I think she was already a Spider Girl. I don't know how to name this without making it confusing, so let me just explain it. One of the alternate covers we'll be getting for the Spider Gwen Gwenverse comic, issue number one, features a look at an alternate Gwen who is dressed in Spider Man's costume, implying that we could get an in depth look at an alternate who more literally became the alternate of Peter Parker's Spider Man. But of course, in female form, in Gwen form, if you will. I personally would be interested to see this if she she is one alt that does get featured. Does she have an Uncle Ben that taught her with great power comes great responsibility? Does she work for the Daily Bugle? Who will fill in as the Aunt May of her story? Will she also end up in a love triangle with an alternate version of herself and MJ? Who will be her Green Goblin? These are questions I'd love to see answered as we learn more about this alternate potentially in the Gwenverse comic. Potentially. I don't know if she'll be in it, but she's on a cover. Number 6. Abiel. Remember when we talked about Joyce being the first clone of Gwen? Turns out, retroactive at least, that she wasn't really the first clone. Abiel was later on revealed during the events of Spider Island to be the first Gwen clone that Miles Warren successfully created. At least until another clone comes along and is like, actually, I was the first. Abiel wasn't too fond of clones herself and made Warren promise not to make any more Gwen clones. Well, we all know how that goes. When Abby found out about the existence of the other semi clone of Gwen, Joyce Delaney, she killed Joyce and then confronted Miles. In the end, she ended up dead herself in an explosion explosion when Kane Parker, a clone of Peter Parker, chose to save Miles instead of Abby. So many clones, truly. Truly so many clones. Number 10. Last Gun on Earth While he doesn't make it to the end of this tale in Marvel Universe vs The Punisher, he does end up managing to stand his ground against the Hulk tribe, which is pretty impressive. For those who aren't familiar with the Last Gun on Earth universe featured in Marvel Universe vs The Punisher, everyone is pretty much turned into a cannibal after a virus breaks out. It turns people into violent criminals should they become infected. Well, Moon Knight manages to be one of the lucky few to survive his confrontation with the Hulk tribe, he does not manage 
managed to survive after being turned into a cannibal by Dr. Doom, who claims that he can cure people of the virus in exchange for being declared Emperor of the Earth, but instead turns everyone who wears one of his doomstones into cannibals, betraying those he promised to cure to. Unsurprisingly, this is Doctor Doom. Following that, Moon Knight is presumed to have been hunted down and killed by the Punisher. Number 9. What If Wolverine Was Lord of the Vampires This What If story takes place in the 1989 series of What If in issue number 24, all taking place on the alternate Earth of 9140. While Moon Knight doesn't make it out of this story alive, he does spend part of his life on this Earth as a vampire, which would likely only strengthen him, especially if he still had his connection to Khonshu and his powers from that. He'd really only be out at night as well, so he'd always be at peak power levels as Moon Knight, and he'd also likely see increased strength from being a vampire as well. Although sadly, not increased durability. Rats. Moon Knight was believed to have perished along with the other vampires when Wolverine, after having his humanity brought back to the surface by Stephen Strange's ghost, reads the Montessi formula. Sadly, all the vampires go bye bye. And friends, if you haven't already, please head on over to Facebook where we are also there and check us out. Make sure you give us a follow and check out our content there as well. It really does help us out. So thanks. Number 8. Marvel Cinematic Universe While we don't yet know the extent of Moon Knight's powers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even following just episode 1, he seems to show a lot of potential, I'd say. The few scenes that we do see with Moon Knight, or more specifically that we get to see in the aftermath mostly of Moon Knight, show that he is a fierce and deadly fighter who doesn't just knock his opponents down, but even goes so far as killing them. True to the comics, he is brutal and bloody in terms of how he approaches dealing with those who stand against him. And even when completely outnumbered, and in some cases unarmed, he manages to handily take down his enemies. I mean, he fought a bunch of armed opponents with simply a golden scarab at one point. And I don't think that scarab would have made a great weapon per se. It's just a scarab as far as I know. I mean, I'm sure it's important, but I don't think it's like a secret weapon. I don't think it's that kind of important. It's a different kind of important. Number 7. Spectre Spectre was a member of Khonshu's Moon Knights in the reality of Earth 51910, where mutants were forced to build the pyramids in Khonshu's honor. Wanting to be free of their bonds and the goddess of the moon, they plotted to assassinate Khonshu. A team of mutants met with Spectre who claimed to have defected. However, when the moon rose high, it didn't matter whether or not he had faith in his role as Khonshu's servant and knight, he was transformed into a werewolf and attacked the mutants. The mutants that survived were also transformed into werewolves and then sent back to their camp, bearing Khonshu's mark, to destroy the other mutants who wanted her dead. Some pretty dark stuff. Spectre being a werewolf here also gives him added power and is also just pretty cool. So I was pretty excited to talk about it. I've always felt like it would make a lot of sense if uh, there were stories where Mark Spectre is like a werewolf because there's that whole moon connection. Werewolves in the moon, Khonshu in the moon, just saying. Connections. Number 6. Jessica Spector I just really love the idea of Mark having a daughter to take up his legacy, which is what this short story featured in Marvel Knight's Millennial Visions from the early 2000s is all about. It's just a one pager with a follow up page showing Jessica, Mark's daughter in this reality, as the new Moon Knight. Relegated to Earth 8753, this is the only glimpse we've seen into this universe, but I'd honestly love to see more if that ever happened. I'd also love to see an alternate reality where the main continuity daughter of Mark and Marlene, Deatrice, follows in her father's footsteps and becomes a hero. Mark in this reality is dying of cancer and so his daughter, Jessica, a scholar and archaeologist, who is also an already skilled combatant and martial artist, decides to take up the mantle of Moon Knight herself, inheriting her father's wealth and his responsibility as an agent of Khonshu. Also kinda gives me Lara Croft vibes, which you know, I'm very much always here for. I love Lara Croft, so. so as I read that, I was like, this sounds like Lara Croft to me, and I approve. Number 10. Distant Fires In the world of the one-shot comic Superman Distant Fires, nuclear war has thrown the world into Armageddon, with the resulting radiation actually robbing the superheroes of their powers. The Billy Batson of this story is actually still able to practice transforming into Shazam, but this only works for short periods of time, and each time it happens, it actually damages the Earth. When Superman turns out alive, Billy is a little less than thrilled, as before the war, he was always playing second fiddle to the Super Boy Scout. His feelings of resentment intensify to a new level though when Clark Kent and Wonder Woman fall in love, as Billy had the hots for her. This drives him to the dark side. 
and he joins the side of the evil mutants, even taking pleasure in killing Wonder Woman. This enrages Superman, and the two battle on top of a volcano. After his own power betrays him, Shazam is struck down by his own lightning bolt, and Superman throws him in the volcano. Nasty way to go. Number 9. Injustice Shazam in the Injustice storyline, young Billy Batson is somewhat persuaded and bullied to be part of Superman's new regime. After several not so great decisions from Superman, including his killing of Lex Luthor that Billy aided in, Shazam turns against Superman when he decides to Shazam turns against Superman when he decides to plan to destroy Metropolis and Gotham, as well as invade the duplicate dimension as revenge for interfering in his plans. He stands up to the super dictator. But when he mentions Lois's name, Superman goes off the handle, grabbing Shazam by the throat, freezing his mouth shut, and burning his brain through his eyes with his heat vision. Yikes! His death led the Flash and Green Lanterns to join Batman's side at least. Number 8. Just imagine Shazam was named Robert Rogers. And instead of turning into a handsome black haired hunk, when Rogers yelled Shazam, he turned into a big pink. A demon. He gets a magical power boost, demon wings, super strength and durability, and a lovely bone necklace. Unlike being powered by the wizard Shazam, he's actually powered by the wizard Merlin of King Arthur legend, and tasked with defeating Morgan Le Fay, which is kinda cool. Fun fact, this story was actually written by Marvel's Stan Lee. Excelsior! Number 7. Captain Thunder it's kind of confusing because there are so many versions of Shazam who use this name. Basically, Captain Thunder was William Fawcett, a kid who was given powers similar to Captain Marvel. He received his powers when the shaman Maroki gifted William a belt with a thunderbolt symbol that when rubbed in combo with the magical word thunder, turns him into Captain Thunder. Unfortunately, after fighting the monster league of evil, they gave him an evil persona instead of a heroic one. So, when Captain Thunder first appeared in Superman 276 in 1974, he was helping robbers instead of fighting them. It's only after Superman urges Thunder to use his wisdom to fix what happened and to make him go back to his own Earth. There was a much cooler version of Captain Thunder in the Flashpoint timeline with a sweet battle tiger, who you'd probably think of when I say Captain Thunder. Number 6. Kingdom Come Shazam In an alternate possible future, metahumans or superheroes are now hated. Because of this, Billy Batson hasn't become Shazam in years, and is now full grown, looking a lot like his alter ego, minus the cool costume and cape and, and powers and stuff. He was eventually brainwashed by Lex Luthor into believing that metahumans and even the Captain Marvel inside him are all monsters. In time, Bruce Wayne tries to convince Billy otherwise, which eventually forces him to turn into Shazam once more, breaking open the metahuman prison and starting a massive war that puts the whole world at risk. After a nuclear bomb was dropped, threatening to kill thousands, Superman convinced Billy to help, and Shazam outraced Superman to the bomb, using his lightning to destroy it, sacrificing himself to save both humans and metahumans. Ending the hatred against superheroes once and for all. Number 5 Age of Apocalypse This alternate version of Gwen Stacy never ends up dying at the hands of Green Goblin, and miraculously also doesn't die at the hands of Apocalypse or any of his loyal subjects either in AOA. Instead, she goes on to meet up with Dr. Donald Blake. In this universe, Blake never became the mighty Thor and was just a doctor, an everyday hero. Blake saved Gwen from illness when she was on the brink of death, and she repaid him in kind by saving his life from a mutant ambush. Gwen would go on to act as Blake's sort of bodyguard, aiming to protect him. Gwen also ends up shaming Bruce Banner for helping Apocalypse, and in the end, he sacrifices himself to save both her and other human lives. Number 4. Prime Gwen 2.0 That's what we're gonna call this clone, who is a clone, but is also the closest clone we'll likely ever see when it comes to getting a replacement 616 Gwen. She was turned into the almost Gwen by Ben Riley's Jackal. He basically gave this clone of Gwen the memories of the previous Gwen 
Gwen, the real one, up until the point of her death, using her remains in order to do so. So in other words, he perfected the clone process and gave us pretty much a replacement for Gwen Stacy in terms of the one we lost. The only problem was that these clones were still, uh, not completely perfect, they were still slightly imperfect, and they would degrade unless they took a pill that he created. This was how Ben controlled the clones, you see, making them do his bidding. In the end, what happened to this version of Gwen was left somewhat ambiguous. It's implied that she died, but it's also impossible for our heroes to tell which clones survived and which ended up as dust. They're like going around looking at the dust being like, we don't know because there were so many. Perhaps some got away with a stash of those life-saving, degeneration-preventing pills. I think it would be cool to see this pretty much new version of Gwen return someday if a writer wants to explore the idea of her surviving. This version of Gwen comes from the clone conspiracy story and series and isn't to be confused with Spider Gwen, aka Spider Woman, as she's known there, from her 65, who actually also appears in this story and also disguises herself as Gwen Stacy. So yeah, I mean, she is Gwen Stacy, but she just disguises herself as 616 Gwen Stacy. Clones are confusing. All right, next one. Number three, House of M. In the House of M reality, created through reality warping by Avenger Scarlet Witch, we get to see a version of Spider-Man's story where neither Uncle Ben nor Gwen died. Instead, Peter ends up happily married to Gwen later in life, and the two settle down and have a son together named Richie. Peter ends up a celebrity, a wrestler turned actor, and has his own corporation, Spider-Man Inc., while also being involved in lots of charity work. Gwen helps him manage his company, which also helps to free up Peter's time for other heroic activities or work. It's really nice to see an alternate reality where Peter gets to be happy and gets to be with Gwen. However, when he found out it was all a lie, it nearly broke him. So that's the downside, I guess, of this alternate reality of Earth 58163. But at least for a time, him and Gwen were happy together. Number two, Gwenpool. Honestly, one of the wackiest characters out there and also one of the most fun has to be Gwenpool. Gwenpool is a cross between Deadpool and Gwen Stacy. Her home reality I don't believe is designated as having a number yet, but the temporary reality number it has currently is 565. Though honestly, I think it's better if we don't even give it one because it's kind of like our reality. Anyways, on Earth TRN 565, that's what we want to call it, or our Earth, Gwen was just a normal girl, living in a world where superheroes only existed in fiction. However, she managed to get to the prime Marvel Universe and was able to actually pursue her dream of becoming a main character and a hero. She actually got her superhero name as the result of a mistake while having her first costume made. A lot of Gwen's abilities and powers are actually related to basically how meta she is and her awareness that she is currently living in a comic book world. It's also what makes her such a fun character to read. More recently, she was palling around with Jeff the Landshark before handing him off to Deadpool to watch over as she knew her own self-titled series have never lasted long. She also willed herself into becoming a mutant and as such has been spotted on the mutant island nation of Krakoa because this is Gwenpool. She can do that. Number one, Gwen Stacy. The original Gwen Stacy, which technically means she is in an alternate. But since we're focusing on alternate versions of Spider Gwen from her 65, even though Gwen Stacy of her 616, the prime Marvel universe came first, I think we can counter. Many folks believe Gwen Stacy to be Peter Parker's one true love, who would still be with Peter even today and happy if she hadn't died at the hands of Green Goblin and kind of Spider-Man. Gwen shared many interests with Peter and the two ended up dating. Both her and Peter were interested in academics like science and they appreciated each other's intellectual mindsets. The only thing that really ever got in the way of their romance was Peter's secret of being Spider-Man, which often put them into quarrels over Peter's running away in the face of danger and often the times that he abandoned Gwen as well. If Gwen and Mary Jane were the Betty and Veronica to Peter is Archie, then Gwen would definitely be more of the Betty of the two of them. And that's definitely, I think, what they were going for with that whole dynamic. Number five, Zombie Moon Knight. A lot of people interpret zombie versions of characters to be some of the strongest out there because uh, in a way they're kind of immortal. Well, they're more immortal over on Earth 2149 if they happen to be a part of the zombie Galacti armed with the power cosmic, which also Moon Knight is not. However, he's still a member of the undead, which is something. It's something. A lot of people count it really high. I count it moderately high, obviously, because this is number five. It does mean that he is pretty insatiable when it comes to his hunger for human flesh and pretty difficult to stop. 
But this relentless version of the hero still probably isn't the most powerful one around because inevitably he does end up dying being killed by Deadpool no less, even with all those zombie boosts. He did still have his moon related powers however, which Moon Knight is believed to have in the main continuity, but they weren't enough to save him from having his head removed. Number 4 Horseman of Apocalypse This version of Moon Knight appeared in Extraordinary X-Men and was an agent of Khonshu, like the 616 version we know so well. However, while we don't know the true name and identity of this Moon Knight, we do know they were a woman and were actually chosen to become Moon Knight by Khonshu after Mark Spector's death in this universe. This version of Moon Knight Hails from the reality of Earth 16558. After the return of Apocalypse in the 21st century, this version of Moon Knight joined his cause, becoming one of his horsemen. In addition to her regular power set as Moon Knight, this version of the character would likely also have been augmented by Apocalypse and appears to have an extremely strong telepathic resistance. Number 3 Vylock Prime Moon Knight This version of Moon Knight was, as they sound, turned into a Vylock Prime by a mutated version of the Legacy Virus. He hails from the reality of Earth 8545 and made his first appearance in Exiles issue number 20. Being of the Vylock Prime would mean he would have powers granted to him similar to those of the mutant and self soul friend of Cypher, Warlock, combined with his already impressive ability and power set, presumably that we see demonstrated by the 616 version of the character. This version of the character appeared in Exiles as a villain as the Exiles came into conflict with him and his other fellow heroes turned Technarch. Number 2 Ultimate Moon Knight While Moon Knight isn't typically associated with having superpowers, or at least it's sometimes left more ambiguous, this version of him definitely does appear to have superpowers. Now there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to say in the comments, but Amanda, he does have superpowers. He's superpowers under the moon. And yes, sometimes that is a thing, but it really depends on who's writing this character, I find. It's just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. Ultimate Moon Knight is quite durable and even managed to recover from being thrown into a coma. Also, I don't know how you just wake up from a coma, but... That is some kind of power. He also exhibited levels of super strength, at least based on feats that we've seen him accomplish, but there is also just the fact that even in the Ultimate Universe, Moon Knight himself receives a mystical power upgrade as well from Doctor Strange Jr., the son of the original alternate version of Stephen Strange who in this universe went MIA, and later on his son inevitably basically goes on to take his place. I'm like, let me tell you about the Ultimate Universe quickly. <laughs> Number 1 Earth X On Earth X, Moon Knight was unable to die, and it was believed his powers were not granted to him by the Egyptian moon god, Khonshu, but instead by vibranium dust which he inhaled while lying on his deathbed in that fated Egyptian tomb that we also know from the Earth 616 continuity. He drifted away from those closest to him and became almost wraith like in appearance due to his immortality. Oh yeah, he also ended up becoming immortal thanks to the reanimator stone. So yeah, he's immortal. He helped the hero Marvel secure it, defending it against the sons of Set, as Marvel wanted to use it in the paradise that he was trying to construct. When it was taken, Moon Knight died, but joined forces once more with Marvel in the realm of the dead, aiding him in his fight against death, whom he planned to defeat in order to create paradise. After the battle, Moon Knight was given a place in paradise as well because success. Also, he's super helpful, so I feel like he deserves that place. Number five, Earth-5 five Shazam. Earth-5 five is a simpler, kinder world. A world that is more optimistic. A world where the heroes are seen as such with hardly any faults. Basically, this is the golden age of comics. Specifically, Fawcett Comics. See here, Captain Marvel is the main superhero, which gives the world the name Thunderworld. He and his family, Captain Marvel Jr. and Mary Marvel, keep the world safe from everything from the Monster Society to aliens. This version of Shazam worked together alongside Superman and Overman to recruit the Supermen of the universe. They worked together, led by Captain Marvel, to defeat Ultraman and weaken Mandrak who was killed by the Green Lanterns. Number 4 The Shazam Who Laughs After the Batman Who Laughs infected Shazam slash Billy with a dark metal virus, turning him into a Joker like version of himself, he is tasked with infecting Superman with the same Joker dark metal virus. Shazam goes to the Batcave and waits for Superman to show up so he can attack. Joker Shazam is easily a match for Superman and Batman one on one, but with the two teaming up, he is a little overwhelmed and retreats, which 
is odd because going by King Shazam, he takes on the Titan Atlas trying to test his new abilities and even defeats multiple gods. When he is in a fight with Ares, he even defeats and infects Lady Shazam. So doesn't really check that Batman and Superman give him that much trouble, but whatever. Luckily, he is cured thanks to Lex Luthor cutting off the source of the dark metal. This guy was nuts and showed no signs of stopping. And that smile, it's just creepy, man. Whoa, 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 slow it down there, friend. I see you're enjoying this video. Well, I hope you are. And if you are, that means you're gonna give it a like, right? Right? In all seriousness, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for giving us so much support. Okay, on to the top three. Number three, Mazaz, Alexander Luther Sr., Earth 3. On Earth 3, Alexander Luther is the crime syndicates, which is an Evil Justice League's greatest enemy and the strongest hero on this Earth. He has the ability to absorb other heroes' powers. And after killing this universe's Will Batson, he is basically the twisted version of Shazam, Mazaz which is Shazam backwards. Take the powers of Shazam and then add the abilities of anyone he kills. He's pretty powerful. After he kills the crime syndicate speedster, Johnny Quick, he absorbs his powers, then goes on to knock out Ultraman, this Earth's Superman. He then kills Deathstorm and absorbs his nuclear powers as well. Unfortunately, the magical word Mazaz works with any version of Alexander Luther. So Prime Earth's Lex Luthor is able to defeat him using the word, turning Mazaz back into Alexander, which is when Lex kills him with a knife. Number two, Lord Marvel. When the wizard Shazam dies, Billy Batson takes on the role of Wizard of Shazam, becoming the caretaker of the Rock of Eternity. He looks very similar, but way cooler with all the red of his costume becoming white and giving him long white hair. In taking his place, this makes Billy equal in power to the Wizard of Shazam, meaning he can drain gods of their power and basically cannot die. The wizard was even able to stalemate with the specter, who is the embodiment of God's vengeance. I think this is easily the strongest version of the character, but if we don't see that power being used, it's kind of hard to say. Number one. God of Gods Shazam. During the Darkseid War event, after Darkseid is defeated, the pantheon of gods who give Shazam his powers is revamped. He gains new godfathers. But these guys are all really doubtful of Billy being able to harness their power effectively. But when presented with a new foe, Billy proves them all wrong. This new Shazam is able to defeat Yuga Khan, who is the father of Darkseid. While most of his powers are the same, he gains boldness the ability to manipulate the powers of the source, and the ability to manipulate the fires of Hrongmir. He also gains the power of the new wizard of Shazam and Yuga Khan himself, who it is revealed is one of the new gods. All this matched with the creativity and ingenuity of being human. Number 10, Ultimate Storm. While Storm is considered an Omega level mutant and is also the queen of mutant Mars currently in the Ultimate Universe, she isn't quite as powerful. Here Storm still has her weather manipulation mutant powers, but she also doesn't seem to have immunity to them. And they aren't quite as powerful as her 616 version. Now I put mutant in quotes there because the mutants really aren't quite the same in terms of their origin in comparison to Earth 616, so I'm, I'm not sure if we even really consider the mutants following the revelation that they were created as a result of Super Soldier Serum, basically experimentation runoff. Storm in the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610 can use her powers to influence the weather by commanding meteorological energy patterns. However, this doesn't mean that she herself is immune to their effects. She can potentially electrocute herself, catch fire, or even catch a cold just from being out in the rain too long. Which aren't really symptoms that 616 Storm seems to be vulnerable to. She is still, however, a skilled and agile thief in this universe. Number 9, Queen of Asgard. Storm and Thor have always been a fan favorite ship for many comic book readers and lovers of the Marvel Universe. Why? Well, because they both have weather based powers, and a lot of people see the God of Thunder as the perfect match for Aurora, goddess and commander of lightning. Though, I do think they both also have thunder and lightning powers themselves individually. A lot of people are like, Thor is like thunder, Storm is lightning. I'm pretty sure they can, they can do both of those things. 
Still, these two have been shipped for a while, but we haven't gotten a ton of payoff when it comes to prominent alternate realities where they end up together. Enter Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm of course never made it onto the comic book page, but was a character in development that creators Saladin Ahmed and Javier Rodriguez had hoped would get to show up in their Exiles run from 2018. Alas, the story never got on long enough for Thunderstorm to be introduced, which is the only reason this version of Storm, Thunderstorm's would-be mother who ended up as a ruler of Asgard and took Thor for her consort, is ranked so low on this list. She and her daughter never really got to exist, but the concept for Thunderstorm and her family is so awesome I just needed to talk about it. And technically the concept still exists in the world, so we could see Thunderstorm and we could see her mom at some point, somewhere in the multiverse. <laughs> it was an idea that was written down, and the concept art for it is beautiful. I love this design. For thunderstorm. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more storm lists, goodness knows I want to give you more storm lists. Also, like, there's just not a lot of storm content in the world of the internet, and there needs to be more of it for how much we love her. Be sure to let us know you want more of it by giving this video a thumbs up. Also comment below and tell me about how much you love Storm. Number 8, Storm, War to Come. It's the final countdown for this version of Storm. Here in the Millennial Visions short story X-Men War to Come, which apparently takes place on the alternate Earth of 1033, Storm is one of the final remaining X-Men who must fight against an all-powerful Magneto, currently in Rogue's body. This all happened after Magneto learned he only had a few months to live. This prompted him to attack, creating an all-out battle that would decide the future of mutant kind. Storm was great injured in that fight but survived. Storm's pain, however, was what inspired Rogue to give it her all in defeating Magneto. She absorbed his powers but also much of his mind and memories. As powerful as Magneto's consciousness was, he was able to overtake Rogue's body. Only Storm, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler remain on this earth to stop him during a final stand in the Savage Lands. We don't know how that went but we can assume it went well because Storm was among the three that survived. So. Sounds like it's gonna go well to me. Storm, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler also sounds like a good OP team. Number seven, Mangaverse. There are kind of a couple different versions of Storm when it comes to the Mangaverse, but the one that I like the best is the one who is an all powerful witch. She is not only a mutant, but also a powerful magic user here who was once in a powerful coven with Amanda Sefton. While Amanda Sefton became obsessed with dark magic and corrupted by it ultimately, Storm would go on to join the X Men. One day, however, she would be forced to face her past as the Electro magnetic demon Magnus, once summoned to Earth by Sefton, returned, requiring Storm to take action. This version of Storm, which we see in Marvel Mangaverse X-Men, is also a leader of the X-Men. Which honestly, Storm should be leader of the X-Men. She's a badass, alright? Actually, I can't believe, I feel like that's only happened a few times in the comics and... How disappointing. How disappointing. Number 6, Zombie Storm. Storm in the Earth Z alternate universe of Earth 2149 was actually pretty powerful and capable. Before becoming a zombie, she was one of the few remaining superheroes left alive. She is initially approached by Magneto along with the other X-Men to join him and help save the world. She also is one of the few who makes it onto the Shield Helicarrier where Nick Fury debriefs them on the apocalyptic situation and calls for a cease of hostilities between all villains and heroes as you know, right now they need all the help they can get to save the earth from the zombie invasion. Eventually Storm would become a zombie but even then it is implied that she made it through till at least the zombie Galacti showed up. And let's be honest, not a lot of zombies made it past that point, so if you make it to that point to me, you're doing pretty good as a zombie in Marvel Zombies. <laughs> Number 5, Earth 15513, 1872. Technically, Earth 15513 is Battleworld, which is actually part of the modern Secret Wars story. The pocket dimension of the Valley of Doom is made of another Earth's version of the Wild West, mainly the town of Tamley. Tamley is run by its mayor, Wilson Fisk, and his enforcers, who ultimately answer to Governor Roxxon. Stephen Rogers is the sheriff in this here town, and he's a bitter but just man after the death of his deputy, Bucky Barnes. Anthony Stark is the town drunk, regretful of how his weapons were used in the Civil War. Natasha Romanoff is the widow of Bucky, with Bruce Banner being the doctor of the town. The new hero, Red Wolf, tries blowing up the Roxxon Dam, which almost results in his lynching, if it weren't for Sheriff Stephen Rogers who saves him. Conflict blossoms when the agents of Roxxon, Bullseye, Grizzly, Electra, and Dr. Octopus arrive in town and start a running amok. 
Another story you have to read. I promise the steampunk looking Iron Man will not disappoint you. Number 4 Earth 717 Captain America in the Civil War The what if stories are so cool. And what if Captain America, Stephen Rogers actually fought in the American Civil War instead of World War II as General America. Given powers from an ancient Native American eagle that also turned an evil racist Bucky Barnes into the White Skull who became the leader of a white supremacist group. Because of General America's involvement in the Civil War, the Union won the war a year earlier than it normally would have. Abraham Lincoln survived his second term in office. He helped rebuild the South, suppressed the rise of a certain group of hooded racists, and prevented the Indian Wars from ever happening. He would go on to fight the White Skull and his new deadlier hate group, eventually being succeeded by a line of Captain Americas who were his descendants. Well hey there time traveler. You're from the time period where YouTube still lets you like and subscribe, right? Well, if you're enjoying this video right here, why don't you just go and hit that thumbs up? It sure helps us out a lot. Alrighty, let's get on to the top three. Number three, Earth 90214, Marvel Noir. In this alternate version of Earth, superheroes debuted in the 1920s and 30s instead of their normal timing. This Earth 90214 brought us Marvel Noir with subsequent noir versions of Punisher, Wolverine, Iron Man, Daredevil, Luke Cage, the X-Men, and most famously, Spider-Man. Each story is a fresh, unique, and awesome take on each character. Seeing how superpowers in this world are pretty much non-existent, except for a few characters. For example, Spider-Man was bitten by a spider, but instead of being based in science, his powers derived from a spider god. Or Wolverine didn't actually have claws, he just carries like brass knuckle blade things. Another example would be the X-Men, who are actually a group of sociopathic criminals, led by an Xavier who believed sociopathy was the future of the human species, which is just incredible. Number 2, Earth 811. Days of Future Past Earth 811 is a future timeline where Sentinels rule over North America. After their creation, almost all mutants have been hunted and exterminated. The mutants that were not killed are kept in concentration camps. Even the heroes who aren't mutants have been exterminated. The Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Daredevil, they're all gone. But hey, this is the future, not the past. Yeah. I'm getting there, okay? Rachel Summers, the daughter of Jean Grey and Scott Summers, uses her telepathic powers to send Kitty Pride's mind back into her younger self's body. Specifically, Kitty's mind went all the way back to the Halloween of 1980, where she informed the X-Men of what their future could become and they prevented the assassination of Robert Kelly. The story is a whole lot more complex than that and is also one of the most prized Marvel stories, so give it a read! Number 1. Earth 311, Marvel 1602. Okay, Marvel 1602 is my absolute favorite Marvel alternate universe. Fun fact, it was the first Marvel writing escapade for superstar fantasy writer Neil Gaiman. The universe actually got its start in a different alternate reality, Earth 460, where Purple Man became president for life. Most heroes had been hunted down or had died from old age, but after Captain America is captured, he is banished away to Earth 616's 1599, shortly before Roanoke was formed, which inadvertently created Earth 311. For some reason, the presence of Captain America destabilized reality and began the emergence of heroes and villains into this world who are counterparts to many of the present day heroes and villains of the Marvel Universe. Count Otto Von Doom the Handsome, Witchbreed, which are mutants, Grand Inquisitor Enrique, which is Magneto, Carlos Javier, which is Charles Xavier, Four from the Fantastic, Sir Nicholas Fury, Peter Parquois, David Banner. The story is so interesting, intertwining actual history with superpowered beings. I highly recommend you give it a read if you haven't already. Number 10. Earth 3. The post Flashpoint Earth 3 is similar to its pre Flashpoint Earth, but way better. This Earth is the birthplace of evil. The mentality here isn't good versus evil, it's more like just evil. Strength is respected more than anything else, with the weak basically being annihilated. Instead of the Justice League, Earth 3 is home to the Crime Syndicate of America, whose members include Ultraman, Superwoman, Owlman, Power Ring, Johnny Quick, 
Sea King, The Outsider, Grid, and John Johns. Earth 3 was reintroduced in 2013 and has played a part in Dark Side War in 2015, Dark Knight's Death Metal in 2020, and in 2021 it was reborn again in the Infinite Frontier story. Like I said, when we started, the DC Universe is complicated, but what's remained the same since 2013 is that some of the coolest stories come out of Earth 3. Number 9, Earth 1. Earth 1 and the number 10 pick are probably the oldest of the Earths and universes on this list. Earth 1 first appeared in 2008 in its new 52 form, but it introduced a whole spectrum of readers into the DC Universe and sales for its comics were through the roof. So I believe it deserves a spot on the list. Here, superheroes are all younger, and they all just started their superhero careers. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, the Teen Titans, and Green Lantern all have graphic novels that take place on this Earth, and they are all just fresher takes on the almost overdone superhero origin stories. With the characters all being younger, it was also very easy for younger readers to relate to, and gave the characters conflicts that they wouldn't have faced as their prime Earth counterparts. Number eight, Injustice Universe. The Injustice Universe of Earth 22 is the universe in which the events of the Injustice video game and its related comics take place. And it first popped up in 2013. So here in the Injustice world, Superman went uh, a little bonkers. After the Joker tricked Supes into killing both Lois Lane and her unborn child, plus unintentionally blowing up Metropolis, Superman murdered the Joker and eventually became a tyrannical ruler of Earth. The Batman of Injustice creates an insurgency, eventually enlisting the aid of another Earth, Earth 1 of this reality. With the alternate Earth's help, he overthrew Superman's regime and rebuilt the world. And that's all just part of the first game. Number 7, The 53rd World. The 53rd World, named by the smart primates who live there, was a world unknown to the rest of the multiverse. It's set in a near future where presumably the world is inhabited by super smart apes, like Planet of the Apes style. Oh, and also, immortality was achieved in 2067, meaning that yes, all these ultra smart apes are immortal. We know that there exists alternate ape versions of Superman, Batman, the Atom, and Aquaman. The existence of this Earth was first revealed in 2018's Dark Knight's Rising, The Wild Hunt when Detective Chimp was beginning to lose his intelligence. The ape heroes show up, recruited by Raven, Cyborg, and The Flash to help with the dark multiverse, saying they were here to help, obviously. Detective Chimp, accompanied by the apes of the 53rd Earth, plus Flash, Cyborg, and Raven, go to help Earth Zero's Justice League fight the dark multiverse forces. That's kind of all we know about the 53rd Earth, I WANT MORE SUPER APES! Number 6, Archive of Worlds. The Archive of Worlds isn't so much an alternate Earth, it's actually an artificial multiverse which contains pocket dimensions in the form of film reels. Now that's just kinda nuts on its own, but then take into account the fact that it was created by a mad god, Arthur Io, who is the god of tales, who is jealous of the new god of tales, which is the internet, it's, it's pretty nuts. He tried to steal the new god's soul and was instead encased in a Wayne Tech satellite where he created the Archive of Worlds. First appearing in Batman slash Superman Volume 2, number 16 in 2021, the pocket dimensions include a world where Superman never came to be, as well as one where Batman never came to be. A world based on hell, a western world, a world based on the life of Alana Strange, and so many other unnamed worlds. Auteur.io eventually was cured by Batman, and he instead became Observer.io, which is a lot nicer. Number 5, Wind Rider. This version of Storm is a hero who survives in the Age of Apocalypse alternate Earth of 295. Here Storm goes on to become enhanced by celestial technology, granting her precognitive powers. She initially takes up the name Wind Rider in this reality and builds up her own nation, attempting to protect her people there from Apocalypse. Despite being captured and defeated by Apocalypse, Wind Rider manages to withstand his mistreatment of her and even resist the telepathic probing of Shadow King. It's pretty crazy, because Shadow King is pretty powerful. She summons a storm using her powers that is so great it creates a huge power outage, thereby giving her the window she needs to escape. Aurora here is given the name Storm by Apocalypse, but later on takes up the codename Aurora Dias. 
Number 4 Bloodstorm Bloodstorm is an alternate version of Aurora Monroe who was also once known as Storm. She was a member of the X-Men up until she was taken by Dracula who intended to make her one of his vampire brides. While he succeeded in turning her into a vampire here, she proved too strong for him to control and she ultimately overthrew and defeated him. Later on Storm would also face Dracula again in a final showdown, where she would succeed in killing him. Her powers are those of Storm of Earth 616, the main continuity, but in addition to that she's also a vampire. As such she can use her powers to turn others into her thralls, make them do her bidding, as she did with Kitty Pride, who had previously tried to kill her old friend and mentor. Kitty was very much like no vampires, I don't like it. She also possesses all the skills Storm normally has when it comes to her thievery skills and presumably some of her fighting skills as well. As a vampire, Bloodstorm also possesses superhuman strength, speed, durability, and shape shifting powers. She can turn into mist. Number 3 Goddess of Thunder This alternate version of Storm comes from the multiversal patchwork world known as God Emperor Doom's Battle World. Here, Storm wields the mystical hammer known as Stormbringer. She ends up becoming one of the members of God Emperor Doom's elite police force known as the Thor Corps. Even gaining a place on this team is a huge accomplishment. This version of Storm, I believe, still has her own standard powers but also wields the power of Stormbringer, making her extra electrifyingly powerful. Powerful. Not only that, but she should get extra power points for just how epic and badass this version of her looks. I love this character design. Number 2 Storm Goddess of Thunder Our previous Goddess of Thunder isn't the only one to exist out in the multiverse by the way. In one of the realities we get a glimpse into through Millennial Visions, this one being classified as Earth 1027, Storm became more attracted to violent elements of nature, preferring to spend time in the eyes of hurricanes, tornadoes and storms. She ends up falling in love with Thor, which created a conflict with Tareen, who also loved him. Thor would ultimately be forced to kill Tareen as she was driven mad by Loki's mischievous magic and well, attacked. As such, Storm would inherit Tyrion's hammer and become known as the Goddess of Thunder. Number 1 Storm Phoenix This version of Storm appeared in the What If story, What If Storm Had the Power of Phoenix. It was featured in issue 79 of the first volume of What If from 1989. Here Storm ends up as the Phoenix instead of Jean, after she creates a tornado to save the shuttle she and her fellow X-Men are as it hurtles down towards Earth from outer space. The real Storm, like Jean, ended up gravely injured and basically comatose, kept in a pod under the sea, while the Phoenix took her place, becoming a sort of an imprint of her and itself melded together, the Storm Phoenix. The Storm Phoenix was all powerful, but while Aurora was fair, just, and compassionate as a person, the Storm Phoenix eventually became cold as ice and cruel to those who disobeyed her laws while she ruled over Earth. Initially, life was basically like a paradise, but as her punishments became more and more unforgiving, the world slowly became a hell where those punished and those even in the vicinity were killed by vicious storms that the Storm Phoenix would unleash on them. Eventually, Storm Phoenix would be defeated. While it's vague how this happened, it is implied that multiple warheads had to be deployed to blow her up, or at the very least just to scare her off. So she is gone, but also it took a lot. Because Storm Phoenix. Number five, the linear verse. The linear verse is an alternate reality where the people age so slowly that it's almost safe to say they don't age at all. Batman began his career in 1939, with his youth lasting for decades instead of the normal aging of a human. In a way, this kind of represents how comic book characters seemingly never age and grow old except in certain stories. By the late 20th century, the world had most of its superheroes. After this point though, things get a little whack. See, Earth became a dystopia ruled by the wealthy, which, I don't know, it seems a bit too uh, real for me. And a great disaster was foreseen that actually came to pass. And the world became very similar to the one in the Earth AD story. Anthropomorphized animals had become the rulers of the planet, with humans devolving, save for Commandy and a few others. Then, in the 25th century, humanity seemingly built a high-tech society, which saw the rise of Michael Carter, who is Booster Gold. In the 31st century, Earth became the base of the Legion of Superheroes, who were an interplanetary superhero team. This world is just a wild ride. Oh, um, and it first appeared in Generations Forge number one in April of 2021. Number four, the Metalverse. Okay, I know we're going to talk about the Dark Multiverse, but we haven't talked about, and we need to talk about the Metalverse. So basically, after Perpetua defeated the Justice League, she gave Prime Earth 
to the Batman who laughs. He and his Dark Knights defeated all the heroes and then reshaped the Earth into his vision. Look at this super cool map! He turned Gotham City into a whole continent super city that is guarded by Joker dragons. He made his home Castle Bat, which is another version of Batman who became a sentient Gotham. There is a hell on Earth called the Hellscape, ruled by Wonder Woman. Arkham Wasteland, ruled over by Harley Quinn. A Superman powered new apocalypse prison where all the remaining heroes are held. Megapocalypse with a rainbow valley where all the lantern rings lay because no one is worthy that exists anymore. This version of Earth Prime isn't exactly an alternate universe, but it definitely sounds like it should be. Hey nerds, just wanted to say thanks for watching. It means a lot to us. If y'all don't mind smacking that like button, it would help us out. And it helps YouTube know we don't suck. Okay, on to the top three. Number three. Green Lantern Legacy. Green Lantern Legacy is a one-shot comic from 2020 in which we are given an alternate Earth where the Green Lanterns of Earth were Jon Stewart, who we already know, and a Vietnamese woman named Kim Tran. Now, Kim Tran, like most of the Green Lanterns, was an awesome hero who never let evil escape her sight in Brightest Day or Blackest Night. She was a pillar for her community too, helping people from all walks of life. And she even helped other Vietnamese immigrants feel at home in this new city. The comic, though, really follows Tai Pham, who is Kim Tran's grandson, as he takes up the mantle of Green Lantern from his grandmother, becoming one of the youngest Green Lanterns at 12 years old. We see him struggle with racism, bullies, his own fears, and against the Yellow Lantern. It's a great story, and it gives some well-needed Vietnamese representation to the DC landscape. Give it a read! Number two, Deceased. You know how Marvel has the Marvel zombie storyline? Well, this is basically DC zombies. That's a bit of an unfair comparison though. The two stories are very different, with the DC version ultimately being slightly more grounded and emotional. In this reality, Cyborg has been captured by Darkseid on Apocalypse, and it's revealed that the anti-life equation lives inside him. When Darkseid tries to take the equation, it is instead corrupted, causing Darkseid to explode Apocalypse. But not before Cyborg was sent to Earth. Once he arrives, he inadvertently infects the entire world with the anti-life equation, which has taken the form of a techno-organic virus. This turns millions of people, and a lot of metahumans, into zombies. The story follows the survivors as they try to quell the threat, and eventually leave the Earth to settle a new home. I kind of prefer this to the Marvel zombie story. I don't know. It's a survival story instead of a funny zombie story. I like it. Sue me. Please don't sue me. Number one, Dark Multiverse. First appearing in Dark Knight's Metal number one in 2017, the Dark Multiverse is basically the shadow version of the regular DC universe that resides underneath the primary one. So there are negative versions of the 52 Earths of the regular multiverse, but it was also originally the World Forge, meaning it has so many more worlds. For example, there are worlds born from sentient life's hopes and fears. Honestly, each world here could take up a point on this list, but it feels like that's cheating a little. The World Forger was the master of this domain and created the great dragon, Barbados, to destroy unstable realities that couldn't join the orary of worlds. Barbados, manipulated by Perpetua, rebelled and defeated the World Forger, creating the Dark Multiverse. A lot more happens after that, but I can't cover that in a one minute segment, so... Dark Knight's Metal is an amazing story and it deserves your reading. Number 10, Tech On. In this 2021 storyline, the Red Skull comes into a new power that removes the powers of other heroes. Tony Stark uses his technology to create the Iron Avengers. Captain America, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and obviously Iron Man, basically the most popular Avengers, all get Iron Man-like mech suits that they can use to fight against similarly mech'd up villains. The whole thing was basically a partnership with Bandai Namco to create Avenger-themed mech toys. So it has no numerical Earth number. But who cares? The art is sweet, the idea is original, and the toys are kinda cool. Number nine. Earth 1048. The reality of Earth 1048 is actually the reality seen in the Marvel Spider-Man game that came out on PlayStation, plus its associated comics and novels. Seeing as this game is highly beloved by many Spider-Man fans, including myself, I thought it deserved a mention. The universe first appeared in the Marvel Spider-Man Hostile Takeover novel on August 21st, 2018 which served as a prequel for the events of the game. In case it wasn't clear, this is also the universe featured in Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales 
and will be the same world in the next entry to the series, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. All the games so far have had fantastic open world versions of Manhattan, some of the best web swinging in a video game so far, tons of alternate reality and original spider suits, and are all really, really fun. Number 8, Earth 8. First appearing in Spider-Man Volume 2 number 14 in 2017, Earth 8 is a pretty great place. Essentially, it's a possible future of the reality of Earth 65, a utopia where Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy got married and were part of a team called the Amazing Eight, whose members included Spider-Boy and Spider-Girl, Miles and Gwen's kids, Spider-Ham, Penny Parker and her Spider-Mech, Jerry Drew Spider-Man, and an unnamed Spider-Woman that resembled Kraven the Hunter. The Spider-Gwen of Earth-65 came to Earth-8 to ask for the Amazing Eight's help to fight Silk in her reality. Unfortunately, Miles and Gwen were on their second honeymoon, so she only got the Amazing Six out of eight, but that was enough it seems. Number seven, Earth-2319. Appearing in the New Avengers Volume 3, number 14 in 2014, Earth-2319 is one of the Earths that dealt with the incursions. This Earth had gone through a fourth age of apocalypse, which resulted in the collapse of the Phoenix Eggs, which in turn led to Magneto forming the floating twin cities of Tian, where mutants would be safe. The floating cities ended up being the point of an incursion witnessed by the 616 Mr. Fantastic. An Illuminati team was formed on the Earth that consisted of Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Doom, Black Panther, Yellow Jacket, both Captain Britons, Betsy Braddock and Brian Braddock, Iron Man, and Emma Frost. It was basically used as an example of what the Sidera Maris, which are an army of robots created by the mapmakers, could do after they invaded from the incursing Earth, resulting in the eventual destruction of Earth 2319. Number 6 Dark Hold Universes Earth 21129, Earth 42222, Earth 52433, Earth 64211. And Earth 37640. Now, this one point is actually gonna cover multiple different alternate Earths in one because they are all part of the same event. The Darkhold is basically a codex written on flesh by the elder god Cthone of all his evil works and spells. There is a stone transcription and a series of scrolls that act as the same thing. But when the true Darkhold was found by Victorious and Doctor Doom, it opened a pathway between the other world and our world and awoke Cthone in preparation for the coming conflict and to temper them with madness, which is just the dumbest idea I've ever heard of. Victorious and Scarlet Witch had Iron Man, Blade, Wasp, Black Bolt, and Spider-Man all read from the book. The problem was they read too far were corrupted and saw horror story versions of their lives, resulting in five alternate realities and five 2021 stories you need to read. Number 10, Avengers 1 million BC, Earth 616. All right, look, I promise this is the only Earth 616 story I'm mentioning, but given the team and the story, how can I not? The Avengers of 1 million BC came together in the prehistoric era to face Zagreb the Aspirant, basically a mad celestial. The team was made up of Odin Bor's son, wielding Mjolnir, the mutant Firehair, the avatar of the Phoenix Force, the sorcerer Agamotto, like the Eye of Agamotto, that guy, Fan Fei, the Iron Fist, the first ever Black Panther of the Panther Tribe, a mammoth riding Ghost Rider, and Starbrand. They first appeared in Marvel Legacy number one in 2017, and I'm not even going to explain the rest. Just go read it, please! Earth 76611, alternate history. In Fantastic Four, annual number 11 in 1976, Power Man knocked a vibranium cylinder into Mr. Fantastic's time platform, sending it back in time. The cylinder was split in two halves. The important to this topic half landed in occupied France in 1942 and created an alternate branching timeline, Earth 76611. In this alternate timeline, the socialist Germans used the vibranium to advance their war effort, successfully invading England in 1943 and even making it to Manhattan by 1944, taking over America by 1946. That's what half a cylinder of vibranium can do, apparently. The Fantastic Four realized what happened though and through some confusing time foolery, they managed to prevent this timeline from replacing the Earth 616 timeline. Number 8. Earth 9591 Ruins This alternate reality is going to be the most recent one, taking place in the 90s. 
The timing of this one doesn't factor so much into its story though, as the more relevant detail is that this is the universe where literally everything goes wrong. The entire Fantastic Four, except Ben Grimm, who was replaced by Victor Von Doom, died on their test flight. The X-Men are held in a prison in Texas where they are horribly disfigured to stop them from using their powers. Peter Parker's spider bite caused an infectious rash that mutated his entire body and caused his hair to fall out. Bruce Banner becomes a monstrous mass of tumors. The Avengers all died in a rebellion. The Silver Surfer went mad wanting to know what it was like to breathe air again. Nick Fury became a cannibal. All sort of that really lovely stuff, you know? I would not read this story unless you're okay with being upset, but I would read this story because it's good and it's Interesting. Number seven, Earth 6799, 1967 Spider-Man cartoon. Bouncing off that happy little lovely tale, we have Earth 6799, or just Earth 67, which is actually the Earth where the 1967 Spider-Man takes place. Because of that, this Earth technically first appeared in Spider-Man Episode 1 Season 1 on September 9th, 1967. Its comic book appearance first comes in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Number 9, as one of the many, many alternate Spider-Man featured in this story. He also shows up in Spider-Verse Team-Up Issue Number 2, when Miles Morales and Peter Parker come to this Earth to find Spider-Man and recruit him to the fight against the Inheritors. It's super entertaining. Number 6. Earth 84243, Conan in the modern days 70s. Some people may not know this, but Conan the Barbarian is actually part of Marvel Comics. And while the era he lived in, the Hyborian Age, is part of the 616 continuity, the what if story on Earth 79213 isn't. Instead of being in the Hyborian Age though, our boy Conan gets stuck in the 20th century. After visiting the Hyborian trade city of Akbitana, he is captured by a wizard who specializes in time travel. And instead of escaping, he is transported to Manhattan on July 13th, 1977. What does he decide to do with himself? Well, after scaring off some punks and throwing an old lady in a trash can, he has a romantic encounter with a modern age lady, Danette, who shows him the Guggenheim Museum which reminds him of an ancient citadel and they go to investigate. Here, he fights off some muggers and then gets struck by magical lightning that transports him back through time to his Hyborian age. But at least he got to keep Danette's cap as a reminder of their romance. Number five, Earth TRN 891, Dark Ages. In the alternate Earth TRN 891, after a battle with an ancient, powerful, galaxy-attacking robot that was trapped inside the Earth billions of years ago called the Unmaker, Doctor Strange opened a portal to create an EMP that would defeat the Unmaker. This worked, but Strange died before he could close the portal. This resulted in a huge EMP that shut off all electricity on Earth. This led to various wars in the post-apocalypse killing billions of people. Eventually. Things calmed down and people lived in various different communities, surviving against attacks from vampires and werewolves. In Europe, however, the mutant apocalypse had taken over and using brainwashed geniuses from around the world began attempting to reawaken the Unmaker for his own villainous deeds. Number four, Bloodline. In the JJ and Henry Abrams written storyline from 2019, Mary Jane Watson is killed by a villain known as Cadaverous after Spider-Man is swarmed and beaten pretty badly by his minions. 12 years later, the story has a one-armed version of Peter Parker, who is now the honestly pretty bad single father of Ben Parker, Peter and Mary Jane's son. After Cadaverous returns out of hiding and kidnaps Peter to use his blood for his evil plans, it is up to the new Spider-Man, Ben Parker, with the help of his friend Faye Ito, and old Tony Stark and Riri Williams to fight Cadaverous and his minions, which includes a cyber zombified team of Avengers. Look guys, in this reality, YouTube has this algorithm thing, right? And when you like and subscribe to us, it signals to the YouTube overlords that we are worthy of being seen by all you lovely people and new people, helping us grow and continue to pump out videos like this one. So I just want to say thanks for doing that for us. We appreciate every like and subscribe you drop. Okay, on to the top three. Number three, Earth TRN 852, Heroes Reborn. When Phil Coulson sold his soul to Mephisto in the 2021 event, Heroes Reborn, 
He was given an object called the Pandemonium Cube, which he used to warp reality, creating the alternate world of TRN-852. Here, the Avengers were never assembled, instead replaced by the Squadron Supreme of America, which consisted of the heroes Hyperion, Nighthawk, Power Princess, Blur, Dr. Spectrum, and Skymax. Tony Stark never created the Iron Man armor, Carol Danvers never became a hero, Captain America remained a capsicle, and the Hulk was banished to the negative zone. After the Earth 616 version of Blade ended up on this Earth, he began assembling the Avengers again, starting with Captain Popsicle. Number 2, Earth 001, Home of the Inheritors. First appearing in Superior Spider-Man number 33 in September 2014, Earth 001 or Loom World is home to the Inheritors, who are a clan of very strong beings who hunt and feed upon the life force of animal totems, specifically spider totems, meaning all the Spider-Man and women of the Marvel Multiverse. Loom World is also the home to the Master Weaver and the Web of Life and Destiny, which is basically a model of the entire universe and allows for travel to different realities. The Web of Life and Destiny and the Master Weaver were captured by the Inheritor family who used it to hunt various Spider-Men. The event this takes place in is an awesome one, and if you get the chance, I highly suggest that you give it a read. Number 1. Earth 15513. There was nothing, followed by everything, swirling, burning specks of creation that circled life-giving suns. God, doom, created the light. Then there was earth. The firmament cooled and he raised up a land, this holy land, the world, and upon it he set his kingdoms. Earth 15513, also known formerly as Battle World, and more recently as Battle Realm, is where God Emperor Doom created his new world using the power of the Beyonders after the destruction of the multiverse in the 2015 Secret Wars event. After the final battle between God Emperor Doom and Mr. Fantastic, Battle World was destroyed and became the center of the new multiverse. The remaining reality became Battle Realm, where the elders of the universe, the Grand Master and the Collector, held the contest of champions.